Hi, good morning. It's Pastor Faith, and I am here at uh, the Flato Church, and I just wanted to show you our display, because this is what we're going to be talking about today, and that is the nativity scene. And so I'm going to uh, show you some of the pieces of our nativity. And uh, hopefully you can see there's the angels. Here's the camel. Uh, you'll see here some of the some of the sheep. And of course, the wise men and uh, Mary and Joseph. And of course, uh, baby Jesus. And I'm sorry, I guess that is the that is the shepherds. I said that was the wise men, but that is the shepherds. And over here then is uh, the wise men, or what uh, is commonly referred to as as the three kings. And you'll see there's a, another one of their their donkeys. And so we're going to go inside now and. We're going to talk about the nativity scene. Hi. Okay, so now we are inside, and I have to confess, I had just kind of looked over the first part of the video that I had shot outside, and I had to laugh because apparently I don't know my donkeys from my camels because. I had said the very last one was, there's another donkey, uh, one of their donkeys, and it's not a donkey, <laughs> it's a camel, and so I apologize, I guess it's a little early uh, for me uh, to be here, but uh, believe me, I, I will uh, keep an eye on my animals and try to keep them straight. Uh, but, you know, what we just saw, this nativity, a man, a woman, a baby in a, in a wooden feed box with straw, uh, the three strange men dressed up uh, holding gifts, boxes, uh, shepherds with sheep and maybe even goats, and maybe there were a few donkeys there, uh, I would think that there were, and of course the camels and the angels, you know, we have seen these scenes, these nativity scenes, all of our lives, ever since we were little. Um, maybe we had one in our home growing up, maybe our parents had one, maybe we have one now. Uh, as you see, we have one here at the church as an outdoor display. Uh, we even have one as an indoor display. And like I said, maybe you do too. And so I just want to uh, talk to you about the nativity scene because the nativity is a very important part of this Advent season. Of course, it is the story. It, it depicts the story of the night in which Jesus was born and how the shepherds had came. And uh, it talks of, uh, in our nativity scene, it looks as though the wise men were there, but we're going to talk about that a little bit further. But you'll see that uh, so far we are going through these uh, symbols of Christmas. We talked about the evergreen tree or, you know, the Christmas tree. And last week we talked about angels. And so we'll uh, include a few angels in today's message, of course, because the angels were present uh, throughout the Advent season and uh, were, we know, went to talk with the shepherds uh, up on that night. And so we're going to be going through uh, and discussing a little bit of this. But first, to kind of set the stage uh, for it, I'm going to read to you out of the Gospel of Luke. And we're looking at chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And this is actually the story of Jesus' birth. And so we will uh, look at that. We'll read that first, and then we will go ahead and talk here about the nativity scene. So Luke 2, verses 1 to 7, if you have your Bibles, even at home, I encourage you to go ahead and open those, follow along, just as if you were here at church. It says, at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. 
And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea uh, because David's uh, ancestral home, uh, because he was from the line of David, that would have been considered uh, his, his registration place. Um, he traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, uh, who was now expecting their child, he was now expecting a child, not Joseph's child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. Now, I want to stop there for just one second. Because there's a lot of debate regarding uh, whether Mary remained a virgin after she gave birth to Jesus, uh, as to whether Joseph was an older man, and when it talks about Jesus' brothers and sisters, was this stepchildren uh, that Joseph had had from a previous marriage. And so it doesn't uh, give us a whole lot of information. I know there's a whole lot of speculation about uh, Mary remaining a virgin uh, even until her death. But it just sounds as though this verse kind of disclaims that. She gave birth, it says, to her firstborn son. It doesn't say it was her only son. Um, so chances are that theory that uh, Mary didn't have any other children is not correct and that she remained a virgin. It sounds as though uh, they did have other children, Mary and Joseph together, and that she did not remain a virgin, but she had other children. They were Jesus's uh, half brothers and sisters uh, because we know his father was God, not Joseph. But we also know that they speculate because Joseph had passed away early. It says that whenever Jesus started his ministry at age 30, Joseph was not there. Um, and it sounds as though he had already passed. But we know that life was hard in those days. And so many men actually died fairly young. Um, and so even though Joseph was already gone, we know that Jesus didn't start his ministry until he was about the age of 30. And so chances are, even though he's considered to have passed fairly young, if this was the case, uh, they still could have been married technically about 30, 30 years, possibly. Um, and so they could have still had, you know, many children, many years together. And if Joseph was, you know, even 30 when he married uh, Mary, you know, he could have died at 60 or somewhere in around there. And so we don't know that that is just, uh, I just want to pass that along to have you take a look at that passage uh, just a little bit closer. Now, we are told when we get back into our original passage that she wrapped him, baby Jesus, snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And then the story goes on with uh, the angels that we talked about last week going to the shepherds to announce the birth of Jesus. And listen to what we're told. It says, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. It says they were terrified, but the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly, we're told the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in a manger, just as they had been told. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone that they uh, had met, that they came across, what had happened and what the angel had told them about this child. So all who heard the shepherd's story, it says, were astonished. 
But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. And then we are told the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. And it was just as the angel had told them. Of course, when we are asked where Jesus was born, you know, we'll start with that. Uh, we automatically think of what? We think of a nasty innkeeper who refuses to uh, open his doors um, and, in fact, is standing blocking the door, maybe, uh, with his apron on and he's shaking his head that he has no room as Mary is close by, clearly in distress because she's in labor. And so we think of uh, what an awful way uh, to start out and, and the unfriendliness of this innkeeper. But is that the way that it really happened? In Luke, where we find this story, Luke uses a Greek word, and the Greek word is kataluma, K-A-T-A-L-U-M-A, -A -A, kataluma, which actually means uh, guest room. And so this kataluma is the same word uh, that Jesus uses later when he tells his disciples to go and prepare a place for the Passover meal. And so we are considering that uh, this was not necessarily an inn, but was more like a guest room in somebody's house, uh, perhaps in one of their uh, relatives' homes uh, or the home of another Jewish family who had been willing to open up their home, uh, knowing that all these people were coming to town. Uh, so because there was no room there, Jesus was born in a stable, right? Right? Um, maybe. 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 But again, we don't know because the Bible doesn't tell us. Neither Matthew nor Luke say that Jesus was born in a stable. The Gospel of Mark instead tells us only about the birth of John the Baptist, and John speaks of neither one. Um, and we think because Luke tells us that Jesus was laid in a manger, we automatically assume that Jesus was born in a stable. But it could have been a cave, or it could have been other, some other shelter uh, where animals were apparently kept. You know, many times shelters were built underneath the houses uh, to, to house the animals in out of the weather, out of the elements, and to prevent them from being stolen. Um, sort of like when we would consider in our own homes maybe a basement or a cellar, um, and then it would bring the animals in and keep them pinned up underneath there. Um, or it could have been a stable, uh, stable-like structure close by, um, or it could have been kind of a cave uh, that they had uh, been keeping the animals in and uh, where Mary gave birth. You know, Old Testament passages in Micah and Isaiah both foretold of the birth of the Messiah in the town of David, Bethlehem. And so we heard from the passage in Luke that there had been a census and so G Joseph, who was a descendant of King David, had to return to Bethlehem. The census was no doubt arranged by God, right, in order to get Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem so that this scripture could be fulfilled. You know, we wonder at the thought of why, why would Joseph have Mary go along? You know, she's clearly ready to have her baby. She's, she's uh, clearly like nine months uh, pregnant, and this would be a very rough trip for her. Um, but it's thought that because Mary was Joseph's wife, that she also would need to register uh, for taxation purposes. And so this would have made it necessary for her also to be present and to accompany Joseph on this 90-mile journey. The trip from Galilee to Bethlehem would have taken about a week, maybe longer. Uh, usually travelers could go about 20 miles a day, but Mary's condition, being that far along in her pregnancy, chances are they didn't travel quite that far each day. Maybe they only went 10 miles or maybe even less. Um, the, way, the way would have been a combination of 
some flatlands, uh, and then we know there's some hilly uh, territory, uh, hilly country around uh, Bethlehem and, and Jerusalem. And so, you know, they would have had to go through flatlands and hills, uh, both that wouldn't have been an easy trip. And if it was in the winter time, because of course we don't know for sure when he was born, if it was in the winter time, that would have been considered the rainy season uh, and temperatures would have gotten quite cold. They would have dropped down into the 30s uh, very often. Chances are they would have had to pack their own food uh, and water provisions uh, because of course no, no McDonald's on the way, right? No fast food. So uh, they would have had to pack things like bread uh, and oil and water, things like that, that would, would keep easily for the trip for that length of time. And there would also have been the threat of wild animals. Uh, there would have been the threat of bandits uh, coming along, uh, robbing people. And that is why most of the time people would join up with caravans as they traveled. Now we're not sure whether this was the case with Mary and Joseph. Uh, we're always led to kind of believe that they traveled on their own and chances are they did because traveling for them would have been much slower than probably what a caravan would have uh, wanted to go. And so we also know when we talk about bread, Bethlehem, the town of Bethlehem actually means house of bread. And maybe you've heard that before, but it also means house of war. And whether that is because of King David and the warrior that he was uh, with his army, um, but the Beth, the first part of the name, the Beth in Bethlehem means house, but the root word, uh, the rest of it, Leham, uh, can either mean to make war or to eat bread, which in some cases kind of makes sense because one army would invade another town or city uh, in order to take all the spoils. So they would take the food, they would take the gold, they would take the livestock, um, and so they would have plenty to eat after they had uh, made a raid and invaded a town. Of course, that wasn't the only reason they invaded towns, um, but of course, it, it was a very real fact that they would do that in order to get the spoils. Now, when we think of the animals that were present at Jesus' birth, we saw some of them outside there. We saw the camels and we saw the sheep. We naturally think, of course, of the sheep because of the shepherds and maybe even the goats because some of the shepherds maybe even were tending goats. Um, we would also probably think of donkeys, which is probably why I said donkey, uh, thinking about that. Uh, after all, Mary and Joseph would have no doubt had at least one donkey uh, with them, depending on what type of stable or barn or cave this was, and depending on whether or not it truly belonged to the house. Um, there may have been other animals present, more donkeys uh, that people had brought with them. Uh, and were also stabled or were kept there uh, from these other travelers. Uh, so it might not have been just Mary and Joseph's donkeys, but there might have been others in that uh, in that place where they where they were staying, where Mary gave birth. You know, nativity scenes also seem to depict the three wise men as being present at Jesus's birth. Um, we even saw that outside three wise men, right, with their camels, but it's felt that they were not truly there at Jesus' birth. The reason for that is also found in the scriptures. When we look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, this is what it says. When they heard the king, after they had talked to the king, uh, they departed. This, remember, King Herod had had them come in uh, and find out if they knew exactly where uh, baby Jesus was and for them to come back and tell him so that he could also go, which was a trick. But after that, they departed from King Herod's uh, and behold, it says the star which they had seen in the east went again before them. And then it came and it stood over where the young child was, young child was. And it says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly 
great joy. And then when they came into the house, they, did, they came into the house, they didn't go into a stable, didn't go into a cave uh, somewhere else. When they came into the house, they saw the young child, not the infant, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So it appears that they came later after the family had settled in and found a house and actually had some place stable that they were, were living. Uh, King Herod uh, then ordered all of the boy children two years and under to be killed. So chances are Jesus uh, could have been as old as two years old by this time. So because of that, uh, scholars, like I said, believe that Jesus was not an infant when the wise men came. Uh, chances are that there were camels. We always see those in the nativity scenes uh, belonging to the wise men. Um, those camels were probably not there. Um, just as we saw outside, they were probably not there because chances are uh, they would have came with the wise men. Um, donkeys were probably a cheaper mode of transportation rather than a camel. Uh, I, I think of camels as belonging to the richer, richer people. And we know that Mary and Joseph were not, were not wealthy. Um, but camels kind of, they look very cool, don't they? And they add kind of a flair to the present day nativities. And so, you know, it's, it's fun to have them. It's okay to have them. Just know that when you see them with a nativity scene, chances are it's not truly biblically correct. Um, we find this, however, also in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Uh, and so many believe this reference to Jesus' birth, uh, this is a reference to Jesus' birth because of the word manger, manger, and that is why you often see ox, oxen and cattle, uh, sometimes in the nativity scene. I know I have one at home uh, that has uh, some cows in it. Uh, the ox, Isaiah says, the ox knows its master and the donkey its owner's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Um, this could also, this could refer to Jesus' birth, but it's not 100% uh, clear. Uh, scripturally, though, uh, the Bible truly does not mention any animals uh, being present at Jesus' birth. That is something that we have just kind of added in, uh, you know, to our thinking but the Bible doesn't list any animals as being there. Um, but, what was, but what was present at Jesus' birth, and which is still true of the nativity scenes that we see today, is that joy was present. Um, the angels spoke of it, and they sang about it, and we still today have reason uh, to sing about it. Each and every time we see a, a nativity or a manger scene, we have um, a reason to sing about real joy or to feel real joy because that joy comes to us because of what had taken place, because of the birth of Jesus Christ. Regardless of whether or not we celebrate Jesus' birth on what many think was a previously pagan holiday, right? We learned about that. Uh, we're still celebrating Jesus, not the pagan tradition. Regardless of whether Jesus' mother and earthly father were refused admittance to an inn or a relative's guest house, we each have that choice as to whether or not we want to give Jesus entrance into our hearts and into our lives. And regardless of whether or not the wise men were present at Jesus' birth, we can be assured that it is our decision to make Jesus our Lord and Savior, our, our King, so to speak. Uh, that truly makes us wise, makes each of us uh, wise men, right? Wise men and women. 
Now, regardless of whether or not any animals were present, we know that all of creation uh, bows down before Jesus. And one day we too will bow down before Jesus. And regardless of whether his birth took place in a stable or in a cellar or in a barn or in a cave, it, is, it only matters that Jesus came and was born, right? That is the fact that really matters. It doesn't matter where he was born, what the circumstances is. It matters that he was willing to come. It matters that he came for you and he came for me. And that is why Advent week is, it, it's not just about um, celebrating joy, but it's also a combination of the last two weeks that we had talked about also. It's about the hope um, that we have because Jesus came as our Savior. And it is about the love um, that Jesus has for each of us that brought him here on that long ago night. And it is definitely, though, about the joy. Joy in the redemption over sin and death and that his life and death and birth signify all of that for us. And so I leave you with this same message that the angels left the shepherds with uh, when we were told, uh, don't be afraid for I bring you news that will bring you great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And so each time you see a nativity scene and your eyes fall automatically on that little baby Jesus, in the, in the manger, uh, remember that he is, he's no longer a baby, right? But he is our, our savior, meaning deliverer. And he is our Lord, right? Meaning master. And he is Christ, the anointed one. And so this is the true meaning of Christmas and the joy of of Christmas. And the joy of Christmas is Jesus. Amen. Thank you.